Hi, I'm Jing Xiang and welcome to Garden Revolution. We've got a great show for you today. Trevor checks out the amazing urban garden at Park Royal Pickering. Sand is dealing with root rot. And Rain will show you how to make a succulent terrarium. There are many types of indoor plants. Some of them are ridiculously easy to care for and yet still look good. So here in my hand is the common peace lily. It's fairly small and it comes with this nice white flower. But today I want to show you something else. I want to show you something that has a little bit more oomph. And here on my left, you see this big luscious green leaf. This is the giant peace lily. It is botanically called the Spatiphyllum sensation. Our specimen here today does not have any flowers, but trust me, when it flowers, it's going to be much bigger than this little guy over here. The Spatiphyllum sensation is one of the biggest Spatiphyllums out there. It produces a large, deeply ripped leaves. It comes in a luscious, dark green shape. And if you could come a little bit closer and have a look at the beautiful veins that are on these leaves. These big fellas here are super chill with light. They can tolerate low light conditions, whether you're at home or in the office. And if you choose to have them there, you can actually grow them under artificial light. In these kind of conditions, you have to make sure that the lights are switched on six to eight hours a day so that your peace lily would thrive. As with most flowering plants, it needs a little bit of sunlight to give it that oomph to bloom. However, for the peace lily, it's best to avoid direct sunlight as that would cause its leaves to scorch. So if you come here and take a closer look, this crispy part here indicates that the leaf has received too much light. Another reason for browning ages is the lack of humidity. So what you need to do is to grab a bottle of spray, spray around the leaf to make sure that the air around it is a bit more moist. It's very easy to know when to water your giant peace lily. Just pay attention to its leaf. A properly hydrated plant should display turgid leaves. A plant that's facing water stress on the other hand would display drooping leaves. Touch it, feel it, if it's flaccid, it's a clear signal that your plant needs watering. So grab a watering can, water the media as so, make sure that the water goes around the media and it goes through the media thoroughly. Ensure that sufficient water is given until the water comes up from the bottom of the pot. Don't worry if you've missed the sign and the media has turned bone dry. In this situation, you should not be watering the plant top-down as what I've shown you earlier. What you need to do is to prepare a container filled with water like this, grab your spatiphyllum by its pot and dunk it in. Over here, what happens is the water would be absorbed into the media over time and within a few hours, your spatiphyllum would perk up once more. It's like a drama queen without much drama, isn't it? And to keep it pristine, always use a cloth and wipe down the dust that are collecting on it. This way, the plant will always look good and sensational. When it comes to growing plants indoors, there is, well, a few little tricks that you need to get right, and particularly up a wall. If you're growing them on a living wall, you need to have the right system to grow them. There's no better place that demonstrates this than right here in Singapore at, well, what is one of the world's leading green hotels. This is the Park Royal Collection Pickering. The sky gardens in the hotel are simply sublime and feature four main terraces overflowing with verdant foliage plants and tropical flowers. The main corridors use plants at every turn and the entry statement to the hotel is a living piece of art. The water supply and soil work together to sustain and support growth and one element few people consider is nutrition. Plants on walls need to be fed too so liquid nutrients are added regularly to ensure the dark green look with this foliage. Now, one of the most critical things to any indoor plant surviving is the light that it gets. Now, on a bright wall like this with direct sunlight coming through there, these plants are doing okay with their light gold foliage. 
But as you wrap around the corner, it gets a lot darker. Now, the best plants for these kinds of environments are members of the aroid family. That's things like monsteras, those ones with the great big leaves, of course, philodendrons and pothos, which tend to grow up trunks towards the light. These are all under canopy plants. But to get the very best results, well, what you need to do is put them in a situation where they have sufficient light to be able to grow strongly, enough chlorophyll to really look fantastic at the same time. And this is a good example of how you do it. This is a truly beautiful hotel, a unique environment, and nowhere is it more evident than on the wellness floor on level five, with the two metre waterfall gently spilling over as you walk the 300 metres or so of manicured tropical gardens. It's got an infinity pool to die for and colourful cabanas inspired by traditional Chinese songbird cages. How could you not sit and relax and wind down completely in this environment? If there's one tip I'd share with you, it's the use of natural stone. Whether it's the slate tiling of the pathways for use or granite, it's such an amazing way to ground you in what feels like a completely natural setting. Except it's 50 metres above bustling Pickering Street. When it comes to tree selection up here, well, there's all sorts of varieties that have been selected, but the one behind me might seem quite familiar. This is the fiddle leaf, or banjo fig, as it's known in Singapore. And it is an incredibly popular indoor plant, probably the most popular indoor plant in the world at the moment. One word of warning, just make sure you've got lots of room for its root system and room for it to grow. It gets quite large. And when it comes to flowers, they're used extensively here, with my favourites being the heliconias. The flowers can be used as vase features or you can leave them on the plant. It's easy to see how this hotel ended up with being the reputation of the hotel in a garden. It truly is remarkable. Great engineering, unbelievable design, and selection of materials like timbers and natural stones and plants. Look at these exotic beauties. They are just gorgeous. And the thing about this is, this is inspiration for you recreating something similar in your own garden environment. It is possible, and this is your inspiration. Coming up next... Do you think growing plants is difficult? I'm here to tell you it's not. It's really easy. You just need to know what your plant needs. Do you think growing plants is difficult? I'm here to tell you it's not. It's really easy. You just need to know what your plant needs and it will tell you. When you see lots of roots coming out from the underside of the pot, or when your plant seems to drink a lot of water and you feel like you have to water the plant twice a day. Now that's when you know it's time to repot your plant into a slightly larger pot and also give it some new potting mix. Here's what you need to do. First of all, unpot the plant. As you can see, this plant is extremely pot-bound and it's not going to be easy to take this out. Look at that. Now, next, what we're going to do is to slowly remove the soil or the potting mix. So here we have our new pot that we're going to pot the plant in. If you find that it's too large, then pot up to three quarters of the pot. Okay, what I like to do when repotting a plant is to prime the pot with some potting mix first. The next thing you do, is to add in a little bit of the slow-release fertiliser. OK, we've removed most of the potting mix, the old one. We're just going to sit this fella nicely into the new pot. Where's my scoop? Be sure to give it a shake so that the new potting mix can settle in. Now, the large particles help with the drainage and quick drying nature of this potting mix. The fine particles are the ones that will help with the root growth, both primary, secondary and tertiary roots. Now, once done with this, what you can do is to add another layer of the slow-release fertiliser. 
After this, the last step would be watering your plant very generously so that the potting mix can settle in. And use a gentle shower. You can shower the leaves as well. And make sure you drench the media very, very thoroughly. You'll see all the water dripping out here. Now repeat this several times. And voila, we are done. Can we have our very own little garden in Lenska, Singapore? With some creativity? Yes, we can. Today, I'm here at the community garden in Woodlands. Let's meet my friend Ganesh, who started this amazing garden. Let's go. Hi, everyone. I'm Ganesh, and welcome to the Woodlands Botanical Garden. This garden began during the COVID pandemic in 2020 and now spans nine storeys in height. So with almost 3,000 square metres, we are currently Singapore's largest community garden. So um, now we have about 250 over species of ornamental plants, plus uh, about 60 species of butterflies. So now this garden serves not just as a sanctuary for biodiversity and mental wellness, but also as a gathering space for the community as well. Hi Ganesh! Hey, hey, hi, Margaret. Good to see you again. Yeah, how have you been? I'm good. Come, welcome to our garden, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Let me take you around. So, Ganesh, is this all started because of you? Well, I mean, uh, I planted the first few plants, but after that, we had our team and, you know, a lot of people contributed to this garden. So uh, we try to plant many uh, unique kind of flowers, but actually, yeah, this plant alone here, this white flower here, is actually called the musical note flower. Oh, that's a beautiful name. So why do you think it's called the musical note flower? Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, so you see the bud? Yeah. You see it's in the shape of a musical note? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's not really yeah. the flower itself, but mm -hmm. the buds of the flower. So Ganesh, can you share with us how does this project actually benefit yourself or even the residents' mental well-being? So uh, for myself, I think uh, a lot of people know I started this project because uh, of the passing of my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, then it was to overcome that difficult time in my life. La. When we first started, right, there was this lady who used to walk this garden. You know, like uh, she started only after we started planting, and she used to come with this uh, back brace. So I asked her. Auntie, you know, you are in pain, why you want to climb the hill? Mm. Then she tells me that, you know, this is the one thing she uh, looks forward to every day. Lah. You know, when she comes and see the flowers, she's so happy. Because this is what a garden is all about, you know, not just bringing people together, but making them feel better. Ganesh's story is just one of the very touching ones happening in this Woodlands Botanical Garden. And the garden is just simply so beautiful and therapeutic. Come and visit the garden if you have time. It is very important to create the right environment for your plants to grow in. A happy house helps them to thrive. And a very big part of it actually comes from the pot that they are planted in. As I work with cactus and succulent most of the time, one of my absolute favourite is the terracotta pot. Terracotta means baked earth in Italian. It comes from a porous clay that can be moulded and baked into various shapes. Historically, Terracotta was used to make a variety of objects, including figurines of all sizes like the famed Terracotta Army in China. Terracotta has been used for ages to make pots for plants. They can be identified by their reddish-brown colouring and for this particular sound. Okay. You can also spot them even if they've been painted on the outside. Just take a look inside for the reddish-brown colour and also again for this sound. They can be quite brittle, um, forming little cracks like this after a while, but this is because of one of their most distinctive features in that it is very porous and the walls of their pot is able to draw water out from the soil to the surface. So you look over here, we already have dark patches forming. This is what happens after a couple of minutes after you've watered them. <laughs> One of the most common problems with gardening in Singapore is how unpredictable our weather gets. So one day it's like super, super hot and sunny, right? And you decide to water your plant. 
But what Singapore wants to do is to change the weather and go for five days straight of raining. And in this kind of situation, your plant does not drink as much water. And now they're going to sit inside wet soil for way too long, increasing the risk of overwatering, leading to root rotting. So a pot like this, a terracotta pot like this that drains fast, actually gives you more chance to control the flow, especially with a succulent or a cactus like this. Okay, it dries faster. So on a warm day or a hot sunny day, you are able to then just water more and just more water once a day or even go for once every three days uh, if it's a very, very warm weather and then control uh, the watering frequency for a plant much better than sitting back and hoping that your plant survives a period of overwatering. Wow, look at this! So with how they can draw water from the inside to the outside, right? It creates a very moist surface area to grow all sorts of moss and green plants around it. And the water inside, you can grow aquatic plants or even raise fishes swimming around. Terracotta pots are fairly cheap and affordable and you can get them at any local nurseries. Coming up next... Being low maintenance, plant terrariums make incredible and memorable gifts for your loved ones. You can handmade them yourself and I'm going to show you how to make an open terrarium like this with one of my favourite plants ever, the succulents. Aeroids have taken the world by storm over the past few years. They are extremely popular because of their beautiful foliage, as you can see, as well as their forgiving nature, which makes them very hardy houseplants. Did you know that there are over 4,000 species of aeroids in the world? Here we have a beautiful philodendron white princess. As you can see, it's a showy plant with beautiful, nice variegation on its leaves. And if you look over here, you can see some nice pink coloration on the leaf sheath. As you can see, it's a climbing plant. Hence, we have the uh, moss pole for the roots to adhere to. Now, we recommend that uh, to spoil our Royal Highness, the White Princess, it's best to grow her in a soilless potting mix. To pot our Philodendron White Princess, we recommend a standard plastic pot. Black colour is best, brings up the green and white with uh, multiple holes. Next, on to the potting mix. You can see here that uh, it's made up of many different components. We have uh, the chunky bits, which are the pumice and pine bark chips. This helps for quick drainage and uh, quick drying. Now, don't just focus on the chunky bits all the time. Size doesn't always matter. Remember, don't forget about the little guy who is equally important to this potting mix and that would be the coco peat. This ingredient will help to retain enough water to keep your roots happy and healthy. Now, with the combination of a pot with multiple holes, it gives good drainage generation as well as a porous potting mix with enough water retention will ensure that your White Princess will be happy and healthy. It's not just about watering the potting mix, you also need to shower her a little bit on the top and the underside of the leaves to ensure that there are no pests and give her a proper washing. Keep drenching the potting mix. Let it drain out. Don't be afraid of overwatering. The potting mix will retain a finite amount of water at saturation point. So even if you water this a hundred times, it will hold the same amount of water in the potting mix. Now the next question you may ask is, how do I check when the potting mix is dry and I need to water Her Royal Highness? Get a stick. Don't use your fingers to check the media. It doesn't work that way. Your finger can only go about two or three inches into the potting mix. Get your stick, poke it all the way into the bottom of the pot. And when you pull it out, you can check, check for dampness or any bits of uh, mix that are stuck to it. 
then it will show that it is still damp. You don't have to water it. Alternatively, you can go from below the pot and poke into one of the holes with a chopstick. You can grow the philodendron white princess outdoors, even in the rain. If you're growing indoors, best to grow it next to a window where it can receive some direct morning sun or afternoon sun. Avoid the noon sun. It's the harshest and it could cause some leaf burn. If you don't give her enough direct sunlight, she could lose her variegation and revert to all green. Bye-bye, white princess. That's something that we don't want to see happening. Do you know that the terrarium originated from the 19th century? Plant hunters needed a controlled space to store and transport their wild specimens for months across the seas through various climates. These days, terrariums are gaining popularity too as a source of indoor greenery with all sorts of plants in an open or closed glass container. Being low maintenance, plant terrariums make incredible and memorable gifts for your loved ones. You can handmade them yourself and I'm going to show you how to make an open terrarium like this with one of my favourite plants ever, the succulents. Okay, let's start by choosing a pot. We're going to go for the bigger one here and then you want to just fill up a little bit of our gritty soy mix for succulents in here first. Alright, this is just the base to start with. Okay, then now you want to choose your plant first. I would say about four or five plants in a pot like this would suffice. So first thing you want to do is to remove the soil from your current plant. If the soil stays with them right, uh, down the road it's going to hold too much water and also cause your plant to uh, rot a little bit more easily. Okay, so now you have the plants, we're going to start by planting first. All right, so usually I like to put the taller plants at the back. And then you can choose the decorative items too for yourself. Okay, I want to go with my series of dried corals here to create some, something like a under the sea or a beach scape. Lah. And then the plants, smaller ones, you want to make sure you put them slightly more to the front so that you don't hide them. Alright, so once you have a design in mind, you can start planting. Make a memory of it, otherwise take a photo if you think you will forget. But then you just want to remove everything from the terrarium. Okay, dig a little hole, okay, put the plant in, all right, cover it back and add a little bit more soil as you go. Just keep adding soil and covering the roots as you go. That's why we started a bit lower and then now we're going to fill up all the way to the midpoint. At this point, you should have your plants sort of planted in and a little space for your figurine right in the middle. Like that. Once you have flattened all your soil around them, you can now actually go for your colourful gravel to finish your entire terrarium. So I'm going to go with a little bit of blue to make like a sea followed by some white gravel and some sand. So there you go, this is my beach and coral inspired miniature succulent landscape with the cutest little cat in the middle. So all you have to do now is to put this somewhere bright and dry and then watering is only just once every one to two weeks. You want to make sure that you don't overdo your watering though because there is no pothole below. So watering should be around 100 ml each time. Alright? So give it a shot. It's pretty fun. <laughs> We've got lots of great tips for you next week on The Garden Revolution. Till then, keep in touch. Let us know what you'd like to see on the programme. Follow us on our website and social media to find out more about The Garden Revolution. Mm -hmm.